typically you get my husband, Matt, but today you get me. So don't be too hard on me in the comments. What I'm gonna be doing is canning this giant bowl of cut up venison. Now I know what you're thinking, canned venison. Canned meat typically sounds gross to most people, not everybody. So this is what a canned venison looks like. When I first saw this, the first time somebody gave it to me, I was like, ew, that looks gross as Matt thought it as well. But yes, this is what the end product will look like. Canned venison is really good. We enjoy it, which sounds surprising. It makes venison very tender, very tender because it processes for probably almost two hours. And so this is a way to have meat on your shelf and not have everything put in your freezer. And at the end, I'll show you a couple of the meals that we have that we do with this. So time to get started. So first things first, if you decide you want to can some of your venison, you are going to need a pressure canner, not a water bath canner. You cannot can meat in a water bath canner. It has to be a pressure canner. And this one that I have here is an all American. Matt got this for me, I think for our 10th anniversary. And don't go knocking him in the comments because he got me a pressure canner for our anniversary. I am not the type of girl that likes jewelry or any of that other frivolous crap. I'm pretty practical. All right, so the supplies needed. Some canning tongs, salt, lids for your jars, your venison that's all cubed up and ready to go, the jars you're gonna can with, and then your pressure canner. Now for my pressure canner, this one requires that I have two to three inches of water and I have to make sure since it's metal to metal contact that the edge of it right here has oil on it. So now all I'm going to be doing is filling up the jars with meat. These jars have been cleaned and sanitized and I also leave them in the oven kind of as an extra sanitizing measure as well. So what you want to do is you want to, after you have a jar that's filled, you want to make sure you push down the meat. You're putting in as much meat as possible in here. You are cramming it full without it coming out over the top. have your meat packed into the can as much as possible, I'm going to be adding salt next. I add, our personal preference I should say, is about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. The meat that we have right now is from my husband's deer that he got about two weeks ago. You're probably thinking to yourself, how the heck do you wait two weeks to be able to take care of your deer. Well, that's because my brother-in-law has a fridge that we can keep the deer in so the meat can age. And let me tell you, if you know somebody that has something like that, find out a way to do it because it is amazing. The difference that in just the taste of the meat it really does make a huge difference to let it age that bit of time. Like I said, usually we let it sit in there 10 to 14 days. What I'm doing now is I am cleaning off the rim of the cans. So maybe there might be a little bit of salt on there or most likely blood or some, maybe some of the meat that caught on the edge. You want to make sure that these are perfectly clean because once you put that lid on it, you need a perfect seal to be able to go on it or else your cans won't seal and that would be bad because then you won't be able to store that meat. So make sure your lids are perfect, excuse me, make sure your rims are perfectly cleaned off and ready to go 
before you put the lids on. Next, we're just putting the lids on top of the cans. Make sure you read the directions for your lids for how you're supposed to clean them or prep them to get ready. Mine are just the typical ball canning lids. Oh, and I guess one more thing. Everything that's in here, it's just meat and salt, and that's it. The liquid that you saw in the jar that I had earlier, here, I'll get it and show it to you again. The liquid that came in here, that came during the canning process. Nothing was added to this. The liquid gets made during the canning process. So yes, the jars right now, just meat and salt, and then you can put them into can. Okay, so now we're just adding our canned meat with the lid on it into our pressure canner. Okay, and now for my favorite part, getting the lid on. Sometimes doing the lid is a bit finicky because you have to get it just right because you don't want a bunch of steam seeping out the sides of it once it gets going. As high as I can. Also make sure your canner is lined up well on your stove. If you don't, these canners are quite big and say your counters next to your stove. Um, yeah, you can see right there where I sort of burnt the edge of it one of the last times I was canning. Matt wasn't thrilled about that. So yeah, just a word of warning. Watch how far over your canner is. Don't want to ruin your cup or your uh, countertops. Okay, now that the canner is all set and ready to go, I have the heat turned on and now it just becomes a waiting game for it to start boiling and then it, the pressure is going to build up there and steam will start to release right out of there. And I'll have to wait about 10 minutes for the, the steam to be coming out of there. And then I get to put this lovely weight right here on there. And we are doing the 10 because of where we live. We need 10 pounds of pressure. So that will go on there. And then I will wait for this lovely knob right here to get up to 10 pounds of pressure where it will start jiggling this. And then begins my 90 minute countdown from there for how long I gotta have that heat on it. Okay, so we have the boil going and the spout right there is releasing a bunch of steam. If you can't hear the hissing, I'm sorry it is. And if you can't see the steam, I'm sorry it is. I assure you it is. So now begins our 10 minute wait from here. Okay, so now that this has been venting for 10 minutes, we're going to put our weight on. Okay, so as you can see, we've reached 10 pounds pressure and my weight is jiggling like crazy. So the first thing I got to do is turn down the heat a bit. I want that weight to jiggle, but I really want it to jiggle like one to six times a minute. It's not good for it to be constantly jiggling that way. And then I set my timer for 90 minutes for the meat to process in the canner. Okay, our 90 minutes are up. And so we've turned off the heat and now we have to wait for the pressure still at 10 to go down all the way to zero. 
Now we see that we're back down to zero. So it is now time for the weight to come off. Make sure you use a hot pad to take it off. From this point, set the timer for about two minutes and then you'll be able to take the lid off. So now I have my tongs for canning. So here you go. As you can see, they made their own liquid during the canning process. These are going to sit overnight here for 24 hours and then they'll be labeled and moved downstairs to where they will stay until they're used up over the next year. So I hope this gives you another idea for something to do with your deer meat. I hope you try it. You might be pleasantly surprised. Matt and I certainly were and we've been doing this now for five years, I want to say. It is a time consuming job, but very worth it in the end. You will very much appreciate the end result and how much time it saves you during the busy days and during the hot days of summer when you need a meal. So again, please give it a try. I hope you like this video. If you want to see more, please click on the subscribe button and we will see you on the next one.